Hi Biz Nerds, I'm Drew, and in this video, I'm gonna do a full tour of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. Let's start here at the Gran Destino Tower. It's like the main building of Coronado Springs, and then we'll move around the rest of the resort. I will say that this resort is enormous, so there's kind of no way that we're gonna get to everything, but hopefully I can hit the big parts. If you have questions about Coronado Springs Resort, please put them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have that I can answer. If you're enjoying this video, it would be awesome if you would strike that like. All right, come on, let's go get started on this tour of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'm gonna head back to my room here at Coronado Springs and do a full tour of the room as well. All right, this seems like a pretty good place to start right here at the beginning. This is where most people get dropped off. This is the hotel's main entrance. The main lobby is not actually on the ground floor, it's one level above. But you can look out onto the lake out here, it's really pretty. And this lounge area down here is awesome. Very fancy. So here's check-in. Not too busy right now, because it's really early in the morning. The sun just came up. And you'll notice that this particular resort isn't as Disney-themed as some of the others. It's really more of, I don't know if I'd call it like an adult hotel, but it's uh, more work-oriented. Seems geared toward conferences, things like that. Ah, recreational activities. So like all the Disney resorts, Coronado Springs has rec activities. The walking trail, fitness center, and so on. Well, it's kind of fun, look. You can do like uh, mosaic art. All right, well, here's a map of the resort. So we're gonna do our best to get around most of it. It's big. Let's head down the steps to the ground level where we can walk outside. And we'll take a spin around the grounds. So here's the iconic stained glass bar. They do coffee service in the mornings and bar service for the rest of the day. It's really pretty. And one thing that I didn't notice at first is that the lighting on the stained glass shifts. It's really subtle. Okay, this area down here seems business related. This sign is labeled boardroom. I haven't actually been down this hallway yet. Let's look. Well, indeed. It is the boardroom and a big piece of art. Oh, look, it's a Mickey Mouse stand a lion. That's adorable. Glad I came down here. That's a really fun piece of art.
Well, let's walk back across the lounge. Outside. And then I'm going to hop upon my steed. Yeah, I have one of those scooter things. I wish my back were a 20-year-old's back. But I have a 45-year-old man's back. And it doesn't last as long as it used to. Mickey Dandelion. All righty. It's a pretty morning in Florida. It's kind of damp, cool. It's about 60 degrees. Perfect weather for a little stroll. Okay, here's my transport for the day. Little rascal scooter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a spin around the full lake. So we ought to see the entire property that way. Um, we're gonna stop by the different pools and we're gonna get out and take a look at the convention center area when we get there. We are here right between the Gran Destino Tower and Lago Dorado, which is the name of the lake on this property. And we're gonna run counterclockwise, starting with some of those cabanas, taking a look at the dig site, and then circling around to take a look at everything else. We're approaching the cabanas with their sandy beaches out front. This reminds me a lot of Caribbean Beach. The last time I stayed at Caribbean Beach, the sand wasn't usable because yellow jackets were nesting or mating or something. Have you ever seen this? It was a brand new thing to me. We couldn't go anywhere near the sand because everywhere was swarmed with yellow jackets. It was nuts. No yellow jackets today though. So here's the cabana pool. There's no key access on this gate. I guess that means if you've gone to the trouble to get this deep into the resort, they believe that you're staying here. So this is really nice. If you're staying in one of these cabanas, you've got your own pool right here out front.
restrooms over here for the pool. That's nice. I don't see a bar though. I feel like if you got a pool, you got to have cocktails. Something that an umbrella would go in. Something made with rum. Something blue. I don't know. The thing that I like and don't like at the same time about this resort is how quiet and spread out it is. So if you are coming to Disney World in search of like, morning, some serenity, some quiet, this is a good resort. There are some families here, um, but I would say that the, the age range here is really a lot older than you would find at some of the other resorts. Uh, there's also a business conference of some sort going on. There was a company mixer like right outside uh, my room in the courtyard near my room. And I know I'm talking about how quiet this resort is and I'm also talking about how there was a party here. There, those things are not mutually exclusive. I was really surprised that I slept quite soundly even though there was a party going on outside. So I don't know if the rooms have thicker walls. Don't ask me, but it was, it was actually pretty peaceful. Oh, I see that there is a bus stop. So let's take a look at that actually. Because I know that there are two bus stops here at this resort. There's the main bus stop and then there must be this bus stop. This must be the second one. I can't hear the word cabana without thinking of the movie Fletch. I constantly have Fletch quotes running through my head. I watched that movie way too many times when I was a teenager. So that's the Magic Kingdom bus right there, right behind the cabanas. That's great. So that's super convenient if you're staying here at the cabanas. At the Disney, Disney Cabanas. Hottest thing west of Havana. Are we west of, west of Havana? My geography is awful. This is top speed on this hot rod. We got a full tank of gas and in a resort to explore. We got the tools, we got the talent. See what I mean about peaceful and serene? I mean, it's really, it's really nice. Okay, let's get back on track. That sign tells me that the dig site is this way. And that's where we wanna head. Cause that's where some of the fun stuff goes down.
Here comes the sun. I knew it was coming. Happens every day. I'm not an expert. Morning. A cool feature of this property is this bridge structure. There's Lago Dorado, which is the big lake here in the center, has uh, bridges that run across it. So there's a little, little island peninsula thing right there that a bridge runs to. And then there's a restaurant and bar right in the middle of the lake. It's really pretty. We'll get there, we'll get there. But next is gonna be the dig site. This is where the good times go down. So here's one of the bridges, pretty cool. That's the restaurant and bar. So it's not really in the middle of the lake. I told you my geography was bad. Well, here we go. We are at the dig site. We got a children's pool. The Jaguar slide. The ruins, explorer's playground. The pool. Not to be confused with children's pool. Iguana Arcade, do you want an arcade? Iguana Arcade. The spa, siestas, okay. Well, I guess that's where I go take a nap. And the ball court. All right, the pool's not open. So we're gonna have to take a peek over the edge. I wonder if I can get into the other parts of the dig site. Now hopefully that's not the only way in, because if it is, then I'm gonna have to turn around and go back and ask those fellers if it's okay if I come in and poke around. Because it says that the pool opens at 10, but does that mean the entire dig site opens at 10? I don't know. So another one of the bridges that connects the restaurant to the remainder of the resort. And the bridges are also shortcuts to get from one part of the resort to the other. Ah, this looks promising. So we can head into the dig site, even if we're not planning on going to the pool. Sand volleyball with a volleyball at the ready. Bring your volleyball skills, at least two of you. Volleyball's not really that fun of a game, playing solitaire. I see. Siestas is a cantina. Well, sure, that makes sense. Because if you drink enough, that's what's gonna end up happening. You're gonna end up in a siesta, my friend. Fiesta a la siesta. Here's another angle of the pool. It's very themed, super cool. I 
like that bags has caught on. Back in the Midwest, a lot of people call it cornhole. It's one of those games that like anyone can play. Not anyone's gonna be good at, but like any kid can toss a bean bag. There's a playground area. I gotta say that that snake is kinda terrifying. Is that a snake? No, that's not a snake. That's some sort of mythical creature, right? Got a spider up above the climber? Man, this playground's freaking me out. We've got kind of the little kid area over here. And I know I've said this before in other videos, but before I had kids, I did not realize how totally clutch having a little playground like this can be when you're on vacation. Sometimes the littles just need to get the wiggles out. And sometimes it's just not really possible to do that like in your hotel room or even outside. And I mean, good luck keeping the kids under control in line for dinner or a ride or something. It's just, it's hard. So having a playground where you can come and just have the kids run it out is awesome. I wonder if I can get in the arcade. Ah, yes, it opened at eight. Let's take a look. Pretty standard Disney Resort Arcade. Got a photo booth. Got the card machines that they use at all the arcades. So they don't use tokens, they use cards. You pay with your credit card, load up your card, and then you swipe at the different machines and it debits the card. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Ski ball. That's what I'm here for. I guess neither one of them is like classic, but close enough. Ah, of course. What arcade is complete without some air hockey? And if you are into pinging pongs, you can come and ping your pongs right here. Morning. Morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Well, there you go, that's the dig site. All right, let's continue exploring. Oh, I didn't even notice. Also a hot tub. Which I gotta say, it's kind of the only pool I get in nowadays. I am like constantly freezing cold just about everywhere I go. I would say the dead of summer when I'm actually sweating in the sunshine it's one of the few times that I'm not a little chilly. That is the truth. Continuing counterclockwise around the resort, we'll go down the jogging path here, and then we'll come back later and go across these bridges.
property on this side is surrounded by thick trees and plants. So it kind of hushes everything on that side. It's very quiet. All right, so rather than head back this direction, because there are more guest rooms this way, let's continue counterclockwise this way. Morning. <laughs> Ooh, our first bridge, how exciting. How was it? I thought it was bridgey. This direction, the guest rooms are in casitas, which I guess is a little house. It's just a hotel room, though. I suppose they differ from the cabanas in that they're, you know, hotel rooms versus like uh, little apartments, little condos. So the Grand Destino Tower is on our left over there. And on the right and straight ahead, those are the casitas. And just up ahead and to the left is the convention center. So let's do this. Instead of looping around behind the casitas, Maybe we can take this bridge across instead. Mm, no. Let's head back, because there's actually plenty to see back here. I would feel like we'd be missing out if we didn't see what was, what was over here for the guests of the casitas. So the, uh, the resort's kind of broken up into different sections, and each section has its own amenities, so... The cabanas had their own pool area, and the casitas over here, they also have their own pool area, too. Morning. Everybody is beginning to stir, getting ready for their coffee, having their breakfast, getting their days started. Same here. My flight back to St. Louis is in just a few hours. So this is the last thing that I'm doing here on this trip is a resort tour. All right, here's the Casitas pool. Let's take a look. Morning. Hey, good morning, sir. Is it okay if I walk around? Absolutely. Okay. It's open, yes, sir. Thank you. We're open uh, 7 to 11. Oh, okay. So this pool opens at 7, and the other pool opens at 10. So if you got the swimming itch, just got to get some laps in. This is where you can do it. And I was joking about the laps thing, but this is actually a laps pool. <laughs> so that's quite literally what it's for. If you want to wake up in the morning and swim laps, this is your jam. Oh, okay, so this must be the fitness center over here too. La Vida Massage Salon Fitness. And I know that most of the uh, spas 
at Disney Resorts closed and are just now beginning to reopen. I don't know, uh, I, I don't know what the story is here. But here you go, fitness center. We'll take a quick look. That's kind of interesting. So they have the resort TV channel tuned in the um, fitness center here, but in the rooms themselves, it's the interactive system. So pretty well equipped fitness center. Bunch of treadmills, some ellipticals, even some free weights, which is cool. Kettlebells, yoga balls, and fresh towels. You too, thanks. Thank you, All right, let's go and hop back on my motorbike. So back here, the, the details of the property continue. It's really pretty. There's a fountain over here. A little, uh, I don't know, what do you call this? Yeah, fountain, right? It's the birthday lady. Check it out. There's a dude up on the roof. Hello, dude on the roof. Do you see him? Okay. Headed back this way. I'm actually going to go back the way that we came so that we can hop on that bridge and go check out the restaurant and bar that's on the lake. And then we'll cross back over um, to the convention center and take a look at that because there's more than just a convention center in there. So the only thing that we're missing by going across the bridge and crossing the lake is these additional casitas, which are all guest rooms. walkways fun for racing all right before continuing on let's take a look at Via del Lago 
which is the name of the restaurant here that's on the lake. And I'm gonna poke around. I hope they don't get mad at me. I, I know it's not open. So the views here are incredible. Lots of seating, just kind of a bar lounge area at night. They've got the fire pit over here and they've got the patio heaters. It really is lovely. Oh, look at all of the hanging lanterns. Some of them are punched tin, like these. Did you ever make one of these when you were a kid? When I was in the Cub Scouts, we would make them out of coffee cans, and you'd use an ice pick and punch holes through the side of the can, and then I think you would paint it and then put a candle inside. Now that I'm describing that, it sounds exceptionally dangerous for grade school children, but it was the 80s. Lori would love these hanging lanterns, though. That's how I would describe her aesthetic, her preferred aesthetic. Lantern chic. Well, what did you think? That was a Via del Lago. Really cute, right? Man, this sun, I didn't bring sunglasses. <laughs> I mean, I have them on the trip here with me, but I didn't bring them on this tour. And the sun wasn't fully up when I started, and I didn't have the fourth thought to realize that the sun would be bright today. Happens every day. You don't have to be an expert. So what we'll do, straight ahead is the convention center, and that's our next stop. So we'll go over here to the right a little bit and I will park and we'll head into the building here and we'll walk the length of the corridor down to the end of the convention center over this way. And that'll be the end of the tour of the grounds. There will be a room tour at the end. All right, let's go this way. Let's head in right here. This is the entrance to Maya Grill. So this is one of the sit-down dining locations. Not open right now. So according to this sign, they're currently open Tuesday through Sunday, 5 to 10 p.m.
Okay. So this is like the bulk of the community area stuff that's not in the Grandestino Tower. And this is the convention center building. It's also where El Mercado de Coronado is. So this is like the food court for this resort. And there's also some gift shops, some other things. So let's take a spin around. So this is really similar to most of the other Disney resorts in terms of selection. I do appreciate that they've got some gluten-free options, Kind Bar. And some packaged to-go foods as well. So definitely this is a little fancier than the value resorts just in terms of availability of baked goods and variety and things like that. But the concept's the same, cafeteria style. El Mercado. And over here is Rick's Sports Bar and Grill. That's RIX. Look, they didn't have time for the CKS. They only had time for RI and then one letter. And if you're going to pick one, X makes more sense than most. chandelier on the ceiling. Blown glass, looks like. Ah, and more punched tin lanterns. I sense a theme. So back out this way, is the lake and the remainder of the resort. And behind us is the convention center. So I'm gonna go just peek in there really quick, but I don't wanna snoop where I'm not supposed to be. And it truly is just gigantic and worthy of its own video. So we'll just take a quick peek. You can see from the signs up above that this place is labyrinthine. Is that how you say that word? Labyrinthine? Labyrinthine? I'm trying to say it's like a labyrinth. Okay, that's the sign that I want to see. Let's head to restaurants, shops, hotel lobby. So I don't know what Las Ventanas is. I mean, it's windows. <laughs> but uh, maybe you can tell me. What is Las Ventanas? Let's
let's head down here, take a right, and we'll take a look at the gift shop, because I got a fun gift shop. It's actually where I got the sweatshirt that I'm wearing today. And it looks like they've also got a quick service cafe. That's nice. Let's take a look. Pardon me. Mmm. That looks yummy. Can you make these donuts any bigger? ice cream shop, a little pastry shop, and then some, you make a very nice some fruit and some packaged bag snacks. Oh, and they got some fancy chocolates and sweets and things. And a margarita mixer? Okay. beverage station over here with some cocktails and things. It's kind of nice. All righty. Let's head back out this way, down the hallway. I wonder when it opens. That's, that's a bummer. Well, here is the gift shop. It is not open yet. As we head back toward the Grandestino Tower, the convention center and the gift shop that wasn't open and the food court and all of that is over here to our right here in the convention center structure. And there's a cute little bar here on the shore. I haven't seen it open since I've been here. So I don't know if this is something that is regularly closed or maybe only open in the evenings but I didn't see it open last night either. So maybe they're running partial bar service here at Coronado Springs. I don't know for sure. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining me on the Grand Circle Tour of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. That was fun. I'm going to head back to the base of the tower here, and then we're going to head back to my room for a room tour. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. 
Here we are in one of the guest rooms, my room for the week here at Coronado Springs. So let's take a look around the room. I don't know how many people you could cram into a room like this, but for adults, if you don't mind sleeping next to people who snore maybe, but for our family of three, it's just fine. The rooms here at Coronado Springs have ceiling fans, which is different than some of the other resorts. So if you're a ceiling fan type of person and really miss that when you travel, Coronado Springs has got you covered. We've got some clothing storage over here. All of the outlets in the room are equipped with USB ports, which is nice. There's no microwave, but the room does come with a coffee maker and also with the mini fridge. When I travel to the resorts, I generally don't eat the food at Disney resorts or at Disney parks. I have food allergies so I have to be really careful about what I eat. And one of the ways that I'm careful is that I order my groceries in advance to be delivered to the resort that I'm staying at. Amazon Whole Foods Delivery um, is available to resort guests now. So if you're a Prime member, you can order groceries from Whole Foods and have them delivered to your resort. And then you can have Bell service bring your groceries to your room, or you can generally go pick them up yourself. Now I know Whole Foods is really expensive. <laughs> There's a reason that they call it a whole paycheck, but it is not as expensive as eating on property here at Disney. And for a person like me with food allergies, having the ability to order some familiar foods that are packaged, you know, not prepared in kitchens where there might be cross-contamination, that gives me nice peace of mind when I'm staying. These chairs are actually pretty comfy. <laughs> I know it's kind of a silly thing, but hotel room chairs are like torture devices sometimes. And these two chairs were actually pretty cushy, pretty cushy and comfy. Coronado Springs is one of the resorts with the new interactive TVs. So in addition to just watching normal TV programming, you can also uh, cast from your phone. So like you can watch your own movies, you can fire up Disney Plus and watch a Disney movie, uh, whatever you like. Uh, to cast to the TV, you actually just go to connect my device and it will give you some information that you can enter. The art in the rooms here is consistent with the theming of the resort. We've got the three caballeros and Carmen Miranda. So I think that's a scene from the movie, The Three Caballeros. We've got a little nightstand with a Bible and a safe. So if you want to put your Bible in your safe, you can do that. You can also make a phone call on a telephone from the 1980s. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Bathroom's got these, like, what do they call these? Doors? They call these doors? <laughs> it's like a style, though. Barn doors or something like that. They don't really look like barn doors. Do barn doors slide? Or is the barn door like the single door? Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. There's two sinks. If you want to examine yourself really closely, there's one of these things. And um, this is kind of, uh, seems like not a big deal, <laughs> but this H2O Plus stuff is really expensive. So just the fact that you can get out of here with a bottle of the H2O Plus lotion included in the cost of your room, that's something. Thank you for joining me on this full tour of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. 
That was fun. This place is gigantic. <laughs> so if you've got the time, it is a fun place to walk around and explore. And if you're a fitness person, especially if you like jogging trails, this is another nice place where you can wake up in the morning and go for a pleasant morning jog. It's not necessarily the best place to bring kiddos, though families will definitely be right at home here. I'm not saying it's a bad resort for families. It's just you might enjoy some of the value resorts like All Star Movies for your family a little better than this one because this resort is so large that little legs are probably going to get tired quickly walking around here. And if you have back problems like me, it's also a little difficult to get around. It's a lot of walking. Like if you book a room all the way in the back of the resort, like Casitas number four, it's a lot of walking just to get back to the Grand Destino Tower if that's where you want to head. So keep that in mind, especially if you're planning on having long park days. Once you get dropped off at the resort, you got to walk all the way back to your actual room. And while that might not sound like a long walk when you're beginning your day, it can certainly seem like a long walk at the end of the day. I enjoyed staying at this resort. I like that it's quiet. I like that it's really pretty. I like that there's lots of attention to detail and the landscaping and the architecture. But those kind of details will probably be lost on your littles if you're traveling with a family. And so again, a different resort might be more appropriate for you because this resort is a little more expensive. And so if you don't care about the things that you're getting for your money, then I wouldn't recommend staying here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, the best way that you can support this channel is to subscribe. And until next time, thumb, sub, bell, I'm Drew, farewell.